Hi there. We're back again in the garden room today. It is September 20th, so just basically the end of summer. I'm not sure when the solstice is. It may be uh, tomorrow or the next day. But I just wanted to show you what's been going on and talk about that a little bit. Now in the summertime, Mike and I don't really use this room very much. Um, we basically spend a lot of time outside in the summer. There's a lot of gardening to be done and such. So we don't spend a lot of time in the garden room and so we don't do a whole lot to it really. And I think me, my aquarium especially gets a bit of neglect in the summertime because I don't pay much attention to it. Basically, it's just a matter of keeping the fish alive, and that's about it. So, this 55-gallon tank behind me, it's the only aquarium I have at the moment. So, I don't keep it full to the top because this is an older house and the floor joists are not very close together. So, the, um, the stand that the aquarium is on doesn't catch enough of the floor joists to make it stable enough for five or 600 pounds of an aquarium with its water in it. So I keep it at about 30 to 40 gallons and that seems to be all right. If I go any higher, it starts to shiver in a weird way, so I don't really like that. It could be safe, I don't know, but I don't want to take the risk. So I keep it at 30 to 40 gallons. So during the summer, I usually have flowers on the arbor. This year I was into making paper flowers, so I made the three roses that you see here. I made some wisteria, white wisterias hanging there. And there's some tiny, I don't know if you can see that, tiny yellow flowers in the greenery. So I made all of those out of paper. This purple one here is a factory bought one. So in the summertime, it's a little bit, gar it's quite gardeny in here. The other thing I do in the summertime for the garden room is to bring some tropicals, sorry, not tropicals, perennials from outside because the tropicals actually go outside for the summer. So my tropical plants are outside for the summer and inside I bring in a few hostas, ivy, what else, boxwood, and blue fescue grass. Those are things that really enjoy having the summer inside actually. Because it's a little bit hot, a little bit dry for them outside, so they do enjoy being inside and they get more care when they're inside too. So for the aquarium itself, um, I do a few things as well. Um, the light shines on it, the sunshine comes in the window that's, that's right over here sun comes directly and hits the aquarium and so the, um, the plants inside the aquarium get covered with blackbeard algae. So this year I tried something new. So the thing that I tried this year is to allow the front glass to become covered in algae. I didn't scrape the algae off. So the algae put up a protective layer that kind of uh, shielded the water from the sunshine. So I had a lot less blackbeard algae and um, the plants inside my aquarium really appreciated that. They were able to grow without the uh, interference of the blackbeard algae. So I think that worked. And the other thing which I'm surprised about was that it made the f fish feel more comfortable, I think. It's sort of like when you have a cliff, say your backyard is on a cliff, you wouldn't go playing on the edge of the cliff, right? But if you put up a fence, you would be more willing to go and you know walk around near the cliff because there's a fence to give you that feeling of security. So the algae on the front glass is like a fence for them. They can still see out, but they can also see the algae on the, on the glass and it makes them feel so much more comfortable and they seem so much happier that I'm thinking of actually leaving the algae on there. So I'm not gonna let it get out of hand. It's just some, leave some algae on the front glass so that my fish can be happy. 
I don't actually keep this aquarium to please my own eye. I mean, I made these fish come and live with me. They didn't ask to come here. So I feel that it's my obligation to make them happy and it makes me happy to see them happy. So I'm willing to put up with a little bit of grungy look. So grungy looking doesn't mean that it is grungy, okay? So that's what I think. Anyway. Okay, so now that fall is starting, I kind of like to do a seasonal kind of change in my aquarium. So when, um, as soon as the leaves start falling, actually the leaves don't look like they're going to be falling anytime soon. Our maple tree is still bright green and lush. I don't know when it's ever going to be dropping leaves. But usually as soon as the trees outside start dropping leaves, I start adding leaves to the aquarium. So I, first I'm going to clean out, <laughs> I'm going to clean out the tank a bit because it is kind of algae. -y. I will clear out as much of the algae as I can get and then I will start putting in leaves, make it a black water aquarium for a while. Um, until about, okay, so at first I will get oak leaves. I, I've got lots of maple leaves, but you're not supposed to use maple. So I get oak leaves from a guy down the street and I will use those from about October to, I don't know, November-ish. They start getting a little bit weird after that. But at that point, I will start getting alder cones. And there's a spot down the street as well. It's a public tree, but you know, the alder cones fall down and nobody cares if I pick them up. And I don't really use that many anyway, so I just pick them up off the street. Um, the fish really seem to like alder cones. I don't know what it is in there, but yeah. I used to buy those Indian almond leaves from uh, India, <laughs> but I figured, you know, my fish don't seem to know the difference between those and oak leaves and, and um, alder cones. So why bother? Why bother sending away? So another thing that has been happening in this aquarium is that the plants are starting to get bigger. I started this aquarium two years ago, just as the pandemic was starting. And um, so I brought some Java fern from my other aquarium over to here. But when I brought it here, for some reason, even though it's the same water, I think, isn't it? I don't know. But when I moved it, the Java fern melted down to almost nothing. And it's now starting to look like an adult again. Wow. Because it was really short for the longest while. Two years, I guess. Two years, it was like three or four inches high. I mean, looking healthy, you know, green and everything. But now it's starting to get taller and wider leaves and it's starting to look nice again. And the Anubias, I have the, a smaller one and a bigger one. I can't remember the species names, but they are both looking really good. Like I might want to divide them now. So I'm going to be doing that. So yeah, that's what's been happening. Oh, I just noticed the duckweed on that aquarium. <laughs> But you know what? Duckweed soaks up nit nitrates. Duckweed is a good thing. I've convinced myself that duckweed is good anyways. Duckweed really soaks up nitrates and it doesn't take up as much space because it's so short, you know, that the leaves don't hang down like some of the other floaters that I would prefer to have those other floaters, I must admit. They're prettier but they do have very long roots that take up some of the swimming space in the aquarium. So I have decided to start accepting duckweed and giving it the acknowledgement it deserves. It is a really good nitrate buster. So it might look horrible to other people, but what can I say? My fish are happy. My fish are alive for two years. In fact, I've got babies in there. I think I've, yeah, I got 10 young fish last year and three this year. The thing is thriving. And I think it's partly because of duckweed. So I'm thankful for duckweed. <laughs>
Okay, so let's wrap this one up now. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye for now.